All right, OU offense. Loved how aggressive they were in the passing game. Woo. Loved they got it. got after it, didn't they? Loved it. A tone setter right off the start, right? Let that thing fly right off the bat. Did they run it as efficiently as I want them to? No. No. Did they move guys off the football like they should against a team like Tulsa? They did not. Should we be concerned? Yes, we should. The double team, the movement, and we'll get to the offensive line. The double teams are not getting movement in the zone schemes. I call them zone schemes. You, we, We've been over that. But the movement at the point of attack, when it's two guys blocking one guy, it's just not good enough. We'll get there. Let's start. Let's start with Dylan Gabriel. 28 to 31 for five touchdowns and an interception. That'll work. Yeah. That'll work. And the interception, it's max protection. The tackle and tight end just let the edge player go. It's on the tight end, right? It's in the tight end's gap. Now, Jacob Sexton, could he have stayed there and helped? Yes, of course. Helped the tight ends, but don't love the fact that you're asking a tight end to block the edge guy one-on-one, but it's it's true slide max protection and your quarterback gets hit and throws an interception as a result of it should not happen that I I don't really put much on Gabriel for that, but he was about as aggressive as I've seen him since he's been at OU when it came to pushing the ball down the field. Mm -hmm. I thought, I thought he made good decisions with the football again. I thought he did a nice job of manipulating the coverage with his eyes at some points, right? Holding that middle safety, kind of keeping him guessing where he was going to go with the football. He's still, and this is super nitpicky, but he's still a beat late on some throws. But, I mean, he just, he continues to play at a really, really high level for this football team. He's making really good decisions with the football. He's taking care of it. I mean, that's, that's a nice day's work for QB one, man. That was that was pretty dang good. Yeah, I I thought he was great. Um, thought he was really good. Yeah, you know we've talked about some of those deep balls, and um, it's just it's like as soon there's as like two a game where you're going wait, wh- what happened? Like did the ball fall out of your hand, or it's like two or three throws a game where you're just like yeah. wait, what was that? Yep, and I you know I I got no no complaints. Like I don't I don't think you're going to see some of those things happen, you know, whether it's, um, you never know. Like maybe there's a, a, a bad route or he got something a little bit different in coverage than he expected. And it affects his throw. He's maybe there's some indecision there. I don't know, but 28 to 31 for five touchdowns. Um, I, I thought he was great. I thought he was really accurate. thought he made some nice runs on the throw. Uh, all in all, fantastic game from uh, DG. Yeah. Jackson Arnold, is it time to retire the QB power? Uh, Well, yeah. Yeah, yes. Yes, it is. It is. Has not been overly effective. Now, we saw him line up in receiver. They had a different package for him, right? They eventually got to the reverse pass in that sequence, and it didn't work. But, hey little creativity there from Jeff Levy. You're getting him on the field. But and we've talked about this. When the guy just plays quarterback. Pretty good. <laughs> pretty dang good. I mean, that, what was that, Nick Anderson's third touchdown? Yes. That ball was on a line. Right there. Yep. I mean, an absolute dime. Just a beautiful throw. Clearly, I mean, everyone can see the arm talent, but yeah, there he's extremely involved, right? I, I guess yeah. that's, that's a positive, but continues to be a little strange the way that they're using him. And I, I don't mind it at all. I actually like it. And I really, to me, it doesn't really matter a whole lot how much success they have with it, because I know that defensively as a staff you have to try and figure out well he, they've done something with him every game they're going to do something against us what might that be 
and you start you have to go back through all of their old film and where everywhere Levy's been and everywhere like people that he's coached with have been and what packages they had when they had a a second quarterback that was athletic it ju- it's a it's a time vacuum for defensive coaches so i don't care what they do with him like uh, if they want to run out there and run like a fumble ruski or double reverse pass it's it's a it's a time sucker for the defensive staff you're about to play they're chasing ghosts that's it right well, what are they going to do with him? And yeah, it's, I'm sure it's just so annoying. Yeah, for it is. for the other coaching staffs. But hey, he's out on the field. He's getting he's getting reps, which is important. But when he just lines up and plays quarterback, looks pretty dang good. Uh, good. The running backs, strange, right? Barnes yeah. and Sawchuck. We saw Tawi get 20 plus carries last week. Didn't even touch it. Marcus Major, I think he had one carry, and it actually looked really good. It was the best they've run outside zone all year long, not even close, and Rouse gets called for the hold, and it comes back. Now, the hold, meh, probably a a flag you throw, but I'm not going to be mad at him for it. But we did see them get to some of the two-back stuff, right, where we we had been wondering a lot leading up to the season if they would get to any of that. The backs in those situations were – Barnes and Sawchuck, but yeah, we only saw Tawi Walker on the short yardage package and he was being used as a blocker. And then, I mean, Marcus Major got no run. It was all Barnes and Sawchuck, Ted. It's weird. It's like Major and Tawi go one week and Barnes and Sawchuck go the next. I don't know. I don't know what's going on in the, in that, personnel decision making um and frankly i don't care i just want whoever's in the backfield to perform well protect when you're asked to and in the running game hit some holes make the free guy miss uh get some good hard yardage whenever you know it's packed in there um i really don't care at this point have you developed a opinion on what guy or couple of guys look best? I still think Marcus Major looks the best. I think he looks the most dynamic. Now, clearly, I, I I know the health history is what it is, but I would like to see them find ways to get him the ball in space. The, the frustrating thing about it, for me, just with how, like, my philosophy when it comes to running the football, He's a perfect outside zone back. He's perfect. Mm -hmm. He's perfect. He's big. He's physical. He's a guy. He's like a one cut guy, right? He can go flat and then yeah, and then pour it downhill. Like he's perfect for outside zone. We just don't run it. Do you think that? Do you think they're kind of because of the injury history? You think that's why he's seen limited time up till now? Could be, right? I mean, going through the non-conference, I know SMU, right? The staff was, you know, they knew that was going to be their toughest test. So, yeah, maybe you're getting him the conference play. I mean, that could that could be it. But, I mean, even if you're doing that, don't you give the guy more than one touch? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. But Barnes, I thought Barnes, he, he did some good things. He still looks like rusty to me. And and some of the one of the most frustrating things is like a couple of the plays that were actually blocked, like the best plays that they blocked up. He he like didn't see the hole well at all. I mean, I sent you a couple of the clips. Mm-hmm. It's so, and DeMarco is going to be all over him for that. But when they actually did have some nice double teams in the zone game, it's like he didn't see it. And he bounced out into unblocked guys and they were minimal games. He continues to be what I call a four step cutter one, yeah. two, three, four. And it, it's just, I don't know. He doesn't, he doesn't quite look all the way back to me. And neither does Sacha. Now, it was great to see him out there. Mm hmm. It was great. I was happy he got out there on the field. 
I'm not sure he's quite comfortable fully opening that thing up though. Yeah. Right. I mean, you got him the ball in space a little bit, but, and, and I think it's clear he can, he, he's going to help this team if he's healthy. Right. But I don't know. I, I wouldn't say tentative, just he kind of looked like he was playing at about 85% speed or something like that. It, yeah. it, it did not look how it looked in the cheese at bowl last year, if that makes sense. No, I agree. I agree. That's I, I, I think that's pretty much what I saw with the backs. Um, I, I agree. I think Marcus Major, I, I never would have guessed this, but I think Marcus Major is their best guy on the perimeter and in space. Yeah. Right I, now. I, now, I think Sawchuck will end up being that guy, but, you know, don't know how much he trusts it right now. And, like you said, 85%, but I I don't know. Right now, I expect to see majority Marcus Major, Tawi Walker for the next game. I I have no idea what to assume. I, I know. I've got no idea. Okay, let's move on to the wide receivers. Uh, Drake Stoops, he is the RPO king. Yep. Right? Dylan Gabriel likes the box or doesn't like the box scout, throws it out to Drake Stoops, catches all the short stuff, had two touchdowns, probably should have had a third. But yeah, just continues to do damage there close to the line of scrimmage, uh, blocking. I mean, he, as always, blocking his ass off when he has to. Loved what I saw from Farouk. Just get the guy touches, man. Yep. Good, good things happen when you get this guy the ball, and he's he's not going to blow back like blow by people as a route runner. Like he doesn't have that type of speed, like you see from Andrell Anthony. Like he can just run by guys, right? But Farouk doesn't have that type of speed, but he's got good suddenness and feel for like the shorter stuff, like the slants, the skinnies, like the in breaking routes, and. They they got him some of the hey just some of the speed sweep stuff again like we saw yeah. last year and good things happened man I, I liked what I saw from Farouk yeah I agree and um, I think all of the wide receivers had a really good week of attacking the football right going out there and making plays with their hands instead of waiting on the ball to get to them which we saw a little bit previously attacked the football thought Drake did a really good job. Like that catch the touchdown in the North end zone. It was like, maybe instead of being like right here in front of him, it was kind of straight up and he had to turn like all the way back towards DG and make a great catch as he's falling backwards. That was a good one Farouk attacking that slant. I, I thought all in all those guys attacking the football was really good. And I don't know if this is a hot take or not, you know who I think the best running back? I was just thinking this as we were talking about. You know who I think the best running back on the team is? Who? Jalil Farouk. Hmm. I think if you line him up at running back, he'd be the best back on the team. I just, I know that sounds strange, but I think he's got really good vision. He's got feel. Like he gets out on the perimeter. He sets up blocks. Like he's just got a nice feel to him. Yeah. Quick cuts. I, I know they're never going to play him at running back. Don't get me wrong, but. It's just when I watch him, I'm like, that guy plays like a running back. I don't know. If uh, number four keeps coming around, got to have your best players on the field. Yeah, four and five. Baylor took a Mike backer and turned him into a running back. I mean, I think it makes more sense if he did it with a receiver. I mean, he's got a, a nice physical build to him. He's not a small guy. He looks like a running back. Yeah. I'm just saying, but, yeah, let's talk about, Nick Anderson. Story of the game, right? Uh, I mean, just so physically gifted. We've been talking a lot about it. And it was really cool. Had a ton of family there. By the way, you ever seen his dad? No, but you were telling me. Whoa. I think it was his dad. Like, he, he was holding, like, his like his gym bag that the guys travel with. Uh -huh. I, I'm assuming it was his dad. Basically looked like James Harrison. I was like, who is that guy? <laughs> oh, my gosh. But uh, it was awesome to see Nick Anderson have that type of day. He can run by guys. He's got speed. 
my favorite play of the day. Love the catch and run for the second touchdown, right? Route running, suddenness to stop, catch the ball, get up field, stiff arm a guy, go score. Yep. That's what it looks like, right? He is, for me, he is by far the most physically impressive receiver we have when you talk about the combination of what you want at that position. And I'm just excited to see where it goes from here. He's got first round wide receiver makeup with no doubt. his measurables. And from everything I've seen from him, he blocks his ass off out on the perimeter. Uh, you can't cover him on deep stuff. He can flat run by you. You know, some guys, some of the taller guys, whenever they're running deep stuff, it's more about being able to go over the top of someone on a ball. It's not the case with him. He could run, he could just straight run by guys. Uh, he's great after the catch. I, I think he's our best receiver. I, I've been now, saying it, man. It does. He, he, we don't know the consistency, but I, when he's been out there, I haven't seen anything bad when he's been out there. We've seen times where he's not out there, and that's like the only thing that you can hold against him, and it's not his fault, is we just haven't seen a whole lot of him yet. Yeah. I, I hope we see to. more. I think we're about to. I hope we see more. Now, Andrew Anthony, right, tone setter on the first play. And, hey, if DG puts it out there a little more, puts it out there a little sooner, that's probably a touchdown. I yeah. mean, he just – Steps on the guy's toes on the post and runs by him. <laughs> I yep. mean, just runs by him. But that speed's important. That threat, like it's it's something that defenses have to pay attention to. It's something that they have to have a plan for. But I, I've been really impressed. He continues also to block really well yep. in a lot of the RPO stuff on the edge when they're throwing those bubbles and quicks. So he has he has exceeded my expectations, right? I, I think he is he's playing he's playing some good ball, Ted. Yep. No, I agree. I I feel much better about the wide receiver group than I did a week ago. I'm with you. Jaden Gibson had the really nice catch. And that was a that was a laser from DG on that seam ball, but to catch it the way that he did with his hands, really nice play. Uh it was it it's good to see him continue to make positive plays right this team yeah. need they need him to come along he came in in the red zone and i was like okay they're gonna throw him one up down in the corner of the end zone he kept splitting over to that left side uh they never got to it but i i think he's he he's going to be a weapon this year in the in the red zone i think yeah all right tight end group not much from the group as a whole right we only saw you know a handful of snaps from Blake Smith. Now they did get to a few 12 personnel snaps, but just not much of an impact on the football game for him. Stogner caught a pass, but I, he's just with what we've seen up to this point, it just, I do not think he's going to be a threat as a pass catcher. He's trying his best man to mix it up as a blocker. I mean, he really is. I, Please use your hands, Austin Stogner. <laughs> like, please. I do, and in, in all seriousness, you, and you talked about it on the broadcast, like some of these zone insert game, right? Where he's inserting, and it basically kind of, it's not quite old school ISO, but it's him and a backer one on one, right? In some of these situations, he's ducking his head, and it's dangerous, man. He's got to stop doing it. Mm -hmm. He's got to stop doing it. Now it's bad technique. It does. It's not going to help you block guys, but it's also dangerous. He's got to stop it. Yep. You've got to keep your head up. You got to bow your neck. You got to use your hands. You can't go in there hands wide, head down. It's the, every time I see it, like I, I like I'm watching the film going, uh, I don't like doing that. Please stop. Yep. No, I agree. I agree. I I I wish that I, our, our tight ends are not a part of our passing game. They're just not at all. Aside from running a little, what amounts to a check down is what Stogner caught, right? 
and they'll catch some things on those little flat routes where they're releasing straight to the flat. We need to find a guy that will just put his hand down and block his ass off and will come off the ball and will come across the formation on split zone and go crush a defensive end or on the insert will go crush a linebacker. We don't need a tight end. We need a meathead is what we need, right? I mean, if if I was Levy, and, and they are doing some good things. I don't want to make it sound like they're just god-awful. They're not. But how much does Connor Neer weigh? Two, high 230s, I think. I told, I told Coach Venables to put Kobe McKenzie at fullback is what I told him. Like, if you're going to play him at 13, Mike, put that dude in the backfield. At H, offset him, run insert, run split zone, and run counter, and let him blow up linebackers and defensive ends. I love that idea. I t- I'll tell you right now. Rudy's, I said, uh, put Kobe McKenzie at fullback, at H back. But they won't do it. But, I mean, that dude will bring it. I mean, that's what you need. Like I said, we don't we, – we are not – tight end is not part of our passing game. And it's not overly complicated stuff. It's like, hey, man, you got that guy, or you go back and you block the end man on the line of scrimmage. It's not like it would take a bunch of time. Right. Yep. Like, hey, that's your guy. That's your guy. Got it? That would be awesome. That's a great – probably not going to happen, but that's a great idea. Needs to. Because the Titans currently – and I know that, like, Joe John Finley's a really good coach. Right. And that's where there's just, there's just not a lot of pop in that room as blockers or as pass catchers. Like there's just not, there's not much. And they need to get something out of that position or they need to just put another wide receiver on the field, in my opinion. That's, that's kind of my point is like, if it's, it's just, it's just a blocker or, or, I don't know. It, we could throw out all the ideas all day long. It's not going to happen, but you know, I mean, it. It's not very effective. Like Stogner, it's just not what he's he's six six. You know, as a linebacker, on an insert play or on a lead play, I don't. If, if he's six six, I don't care how much he weighs. Give me that guy all day long. They're so easy to get under. They, I mean. They're they're not good at those type of plays, and it's the same thing coming all the way across the formation on, on a split zone. It's hard for those guys to win the leverage battle against the DN that's starting with his hand down. You know, it's just it's hard for those guys to win that battle. But we'll see what they do. Yeah, we'll see. Offensive line, group as a whole, just not creating enough movement in the run again, uh, especially. I mentioned it. The the double teams just it's two guys on one guy. They are not, and those are the what I would call the, the those are the inflection points of the running place. Right? Like that's where you you have to be good. Right? You have to win your double teams when you got two guys on one. And I think that's the biggest issue right now. Uh I can just go left to right we got a lot of guys we got to talk about because a lot of different guys played mm-hmm. walter rouse both tackles i thought it was their worst game of the season for both of them i for rouse i i didn't think like he wasn't moving great i thought he had some false steps in the run game that kind of put him in some bad positions the hold he got called for was man thought he was solid in pass protection i just it was it was just underwhelming. It's a you game you, he should dominate. Yeah. And it wasn't a dominant performance. No, it was not. Savion Bird. Not really sure what happened, man. Um, it was concerning. And I'm not talking about anything about his play. Right, he had some really good snaps when he was out there. He just wasn't out there for very long. He was crying on the sideline. And typically that's one or two. One of two things, right? In my experience in football, 
And he did get kind of rolled up on field goal, which was strange. He had like a slight limp going. But if a guy's crying on the sideline, it's usually one of two things. His season is over because of injury. Or it's a head injury. I mean, that's my experience. And I, I didn't ask. I didn't want to put any trainer, player, anyone in that situation. But that's either option is not good, especially when you think about the D line that they're playing coming up on Saturday. Right. So yeah. I was, I was excited to watch him play in this game. I thought it would be a game where he could gain some confidence and yeah, what he played 14 snaps on offense. And my last note is, are you okay? Yeah. So I, I, I don't know. My, my guess is it's a concussion, but I, I haven't talked to anyone. I'm just, I'm honestly just speculating. Yeah. Well, um, I, of the options, I mean, that I, I don't know. I, I, neither option's good. No, neither option's good, but you'd like to have him back this season at some point. Um, because now we're, we're either going to be, really inexperienced or really undersized at guard, right? One or the yes. other. Yeah. Now, Caden Green came in. I thought it was interesting. Like, hey, Bird's out. First guy to come in at left guard was Caden Green. We talked about this some, like, back in the spring and, and through the summer, like, this, if this would ever be an option. Yeah, and I'll start here. He looks massive at guard. <laughs> I mean, just massive, right? And... I I really like the strain that he plays with, right? Plays hard, he strains, and he had some good plays, but he's going to be disappointed with the way that it looks on film. But the good thing is, I think it's easily correctable, and I think really the issue is like, hey man, he he just got to he's got to get used to life in the muck there, baby. Mm -hmm. The interior is a different world. Everything happens quicker. Right. And his biggest issue was his feet. He, he was not gaining any ground with his steps in the run game, just picking them up and putting them down, not, not creating force moving forward. It makes it really hard to move guys. If you're not good with your feet in the run game in that situation, I think that's easily correctable for him. I think he'll see that on tape and go, what was I doing? Right. Yeah. And it's easily correctable in some of the shorter yardage plays, like down by the goal line. He would, he would, not only was he not gaining ground with his feet, he was hopping, hop and brace. No, you have to get your feet in the ground and play with force through the ground. Force through the ground is how you create force. I, I think, I think the guy fight, fights like hell when he's engaged, but Hey, get the feet, right. I think it's a pretty easy fix. I think it'll get more comfortable there in the interior. Just got to get used. Got to get used to life in there, baby. It's different. Yeah. I, I, his size could, I, if, if he can, if he can get some of the technique and, and footwork down his size in there could, could end up being a really nice bonus. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And he's a strong kid. Yeah. But like you said, that footwork, I, if you don't have the feet right, you don't, you're not using big muscle groups. You end up, you know, up on your toes. You're, you're, you gotta, you gotta get the hips into it. Yeah, no doubt about it. And I think, I think he'll, I think he'll be able to fix that pretty easily, or at least I hope he will. Because he may be starting on the road against two, uh, two future NFL draft picks at defensive tackle here. Oh, yeah. That that is a very real possibility. Troy Everett played a lot of snaps, played some guard, played some center. I I kind of know what I'm going to get with him now. Battled nicely, had one terrible mental error, but I he he's a guy that's not going to create a ton of movement at the first level, and oh, he does do a nice job working up to the second level, getting on backers, staying engaged, finishing on those guys, but just a little undersized and doesn't create a ton at the point of attack. So 
I, it, I, I feel like I just say the same thing every single week about him, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, you know, there's – there's a role for that. I mean, he's, he's your utility, uh, interior offensive lineman, um, you know, not going to overwhelm people with strength and power, but he's going to block the right guy. Going to be able to get up to the second level a little bit, uh, reliable. There's a place for that. Yeah. Andrew Rain thought he thought he was much better in pass protection in this game. He's still got He's got to get his pads down right in the run game and pass protection. Just got to play lower. Uh, I would like to see the guys on the interior as a whole pass some of the twist games off quicker, but right? I'd like to see their eyes go from here to here quicker and recognize that thing, uh, recognize it, communicate it faster, especially Cincinnati's going to do a ton of that stuff where they're going to have to pass a bunch of stuff off. But Rame is really struggling to create movement on double teams in the tight zone variations. And I just, I just disagree with the technique that they're using. I do. I'm just going to make it that simple. They're going high leg technique. He he is hitting his guards more than he's hitting defensive tackles currently with how he's doing it. Like he is, he's high legging and then he's like throwing a shoulder and he, I I just don't, I don't understand it. And he's, he's typically hitting Matoyer or whoever they're playing at left guard more than he's hitting the defensive tackle. And I don't know why they're keep why they're doing it. It's not working. It's not working. It's not creating movement. It's just I, I wish they would reevaluate that. But I'm not is the that, coach. Does that technique is that make it slower? The but... technique, it well, first of all, you are much slower coming off the ball with that technique. Traditionally, when you high leg, it's in a duo concept, right? And traditionally, when you high leg, you're you're either working to a guy that's stacked right over you or kind of even a little backside. But the play, the the flow of the play, you know, is going to draw him over so you can be thicker on the double team. The problem with their high leg in it, and not to get too deep in the weeds, they're high legging it. The backer is almost a little backside. The ball never goes front side in the tight zone concept. So the guy isn't like the flow, the track of the back is pouring it downhill, straight down. It's not a zone path or not. Some people remember like ride 34, ride 35. If you played in, in that type of system, it's not ride action. So the backer never flows. So it may like I he's knocking the is he knocking the guard off on his angle up to the backer? He's just knocking the guard off straight up. Like, <laughs> it's I it just it doesn't look right to me, okay? I don't know how else to put it. But and, and clearly you're not seeing them make a lot of money in that concept. You're just not seeing it. Real muddy in there. Real muddy, man. A lot of bodies. Um McKay Matoyer thought he played well. He graded out the best for me. Uh, thought he was really consistent. Never questioned his effort. Uh, it's not perfect. He still needs to create more movement. Uh, when he, when he's kind of on an island in the run game, held up well in pass protection. Got push pulled again down by the goal line. Right, that is on tape. Right, got swamped. That is on tape. He needs to be ready for it now. Right, <laughs> especially this week. Yeah. So uh, other than that. You know, I thought I thought McKay did a really nice job, but uh, Tyler Guyton, I know he's going to be really disappointed in the way he played. In fact, I could just tell by his body language once that first group got taken out of the game, he did not look like a guy who had just played a game where you know his team was beating the absolute absolute hell out of the opponent. Um, he's normally so efficient with his feet. And that was just not I, – I, I thought his feet were the problem in this game. He would freeze them randomly. There's, like, some hesitation. They'd get wide. They'd get narrow. He'd float in his sets, right? He'd go – you know, there's, there's kind of this point tackles want to get to, and it's different for every tackle. There's kind of this point tackles want to get to in their alignment, like where they're at with the edge guy. He went too far. A couple times got beat inside as a result of it. 
and uh, it was kind of catching in the run game, which I hadn't really seen from him. He'd been so good at coming off the ball and being decisive with his feet. But yeah, I thought overall the, I thought it was his worst game of the season. And I think it's stuff that's correctable though. Right. And he missed with his hands a few times, but once again, I thought it was all connected to the feet. A little, of, little all over the place for Guyton. And, you know, with the way that that guy works, I know that I know he'll take correcting that stuff very seriously. He's, he's a much better player than what he put on tape in that game. Yeah. And I'm, you know, I'm just guessing question wise, but probably maybe got caught oversetting and, and being too quick because now these edge guys were strong, but not super fast get off guys. Yeah. And that's like Kapinski's whole thing. Zero for them. Like he was a, you know, like swatting, go inside type of guy. Like you, you got to know who you're playing against. Right. Yeah. Right. You'll get more straight speed at, uh, at times from upcoming defensive line, but yeah. That's that's got to be you, you got to take that film work to the to the field like there's a lot of like tackle may be one of the the positions both offensively and defensively where there's more like you've got to study the individual player that you're blocking more so than just like the look or the front that you're getting. Yeah. Um, no, but he uh he played below the level of expectation I have for him, right? And I expect it to not look like that again during the season. But that's just – that's a, I, I've talked about this a lot. I don't view all these guys through the same lens, right? Guyton, I view for through the, hey, you're, you should be a top 15 pick lens. That's not what a top 15 pick should look like against Tulsa. Right. right? And he knows that. He knows that. Right. He knows what it looks like. So we'll uh we'll see what he how how he bounces back against Cincinnati. 